All right. Uh, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Uh, wherever you're joining me from around the world, really excited to see you here. I've got a couple of people from the U.S., a couple of people from uh, the East Coast. So really looking forward to uh, getting rolling today. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the digital expedition, uh, what it means and what it actually is, and how you can actually you know get a hold of it and uh, put the pieces in place. It, it's obviously been a a very rocky start the last, uh, well, not start, but continuation the last uh, seven to eight months. So we're really sort of looking at how we can actually get that going, putting the pieces in place. And as I talk a lot about in digital, it, it, it's a huge challenge to be able to understand what pieces you need and when and how they work and that sort of thing. So that's really critical to be able to do and making sure that you have these pieces and that they're actually are uh, rather organized into a system, into a process that actually allows you to, to build on the business as well. Everybody who's been in business knows that just being in business is hard and it's not necessarily easy and, and no one would be silly for thinking that it is easy, right? Um, it's not, but the businesses that create that resilience, the businesses that build that foundation are the ones that are going to be able to move forward and they're the ones that are going to be able to you know build from the ashes so to speak because they have the foundation in place because they have all the pieces um that that we need as well so um without further ado just quickly switch over to my um to my ipad i love presenting with the ipad i don't know if anybody else has tried it but it's it's fantastic because it really allows that flexibility to kind of create more of a, a better training environment. And that's what I use it a lot for. So if you haven't been able to do that, I'm happy to walk you through that or help you through um, as well, because there are some, some cool things that you can do uh, with a presentation that uh, wouldn't necessarily be, I don't want to just show you a, you know, a standard PowerPoint. I think those are really cool and there's definitely a time and a place for those, but something a little bit more interactive and trying to create, you know, I'm, I'm striving towards that digital experience as well um, that, you know, can not, not necessarily replace it. And I'm going to go into this in a bit, but how do we actually put these pieces together and that sort of thing? So it's September, 2020, right? Where to from here? Where are you going? What are you doing? So these are some fundamental questions that I'm going to be asking um, as well. Um, my name is Doyle Bueller and I guide digital challenger businesses in navigating the daunting digital economy and overcoming the fear, anxiety, and resistance of operating as a true digital company in the 2020s. I help them to discover, align, and skyrocket their online business and visibility so the world knows who they are and how they do business. I've been in digital for about 18 years, since about 2002. I created a couple startups in Canada. Uh, one of them become, became the top 50 fastest growing companies in Canada uh, in the e-commerce world and um, then one of the fastest growing companies in the state, uh, in the province rather, Manitoba. So I've been in digital for a long time. I'm able to kind of, I've seen what's happened and what works and what doesn't and how to put these pieces together. Um, and this is part of the journey, part of the digital journey as well. And I like to say this is, you know, we are the digital challengers. So there's a, a cool quote here. I actually do have to thank uh, Jeff Hetherington for finding this uh, for me. Really, really appreciate it. But I, it says a lot too in terms of how do we actually step up? How do we actually make a difference? How do we actually understand what needs to be done and how it needs to, to go forward and that sort of thing as well. So, um, and what kind of started it all was I developed what I call the digital expedition planning worksheet. And this is the 10 base camps, again, I'm going to get into this shortly, that help people align what they need to do and when and how and that sort of thing. So it's basically a, an overview of all the things that you need to be able to start to look at and develop. And some of them aren't necessarily action. Some of them are just sort of reflections and understandings to say, this is what I need to understand at this point in time. And it's critical that we also go through these things, these understandings, these comprehensions to be able to build on our competencies as well. And that's a huge part of what I, I talk about uh, with digital leadership and that uh, sort of thing as well. So housekeeping, um, if you don't have, I did send out an email earlier so that you could get this worksheet. I've uh, answered hopefully everybody on LinkedIn and Facebook about sending them directly the PDF. So we are going to be following through this. That's sort of the the, um, the way that I've organized this webinar. It is just a training webinar. There's no sales, no pitch, nothing. It's just to educate you and to show you sort of how the, you can put these pieces together because um, they're obviously really important. But as I said, I sent you an email. You should have that um, uh, for everybody registered. 
the, uh, the PDF was emailed to you a couple hours ago. If you don't have it, if you want to get a, a, a look at it, you can download. I've got some resources as well. And there's the, or if you don't want to download it, I go to bit.ly slash digital expedition resources. You can download the worksheet. You can, there are some other resources there as well. If you have questions, please type in the chat along the way. When I'm screen sharing, it's kind of a little bit of a challenge to be able to, to do both. Um, but if you do, I will go through your questions at the end. So feel free to ask any questions along the way. And I, hopefully I'll be able to ask you some questions also. Um, and uh, I'll check back and forth as we get into it. If this is helpful, please like and share. If you're watching this as replay, please leave a comment and happy to, to answer those uh, down the, the road as well. So the journey of discovery and opportunity, right? You're sitting on a mountain of value. And if you really look at how do you actually put these in place, right? This is our mountain. It's a big, it's a barrier. It's something that we don't necessarily have all the understanding of what is it? What does it look like? You know, there's so many questions about what this is and how, how we are doing and what we're going to do with it and that sort of thing. So it's really important that we look at this for, in terms of, yes, this is going to be a discovery, but it also is going to be an opportunity. You already have a lot of this stuff there, right? I'm not saying change your business. I'm not saying, you know, I mean, there's a lot of talk about shift and readjustments and that sort of thing. That's perfectly fine. And you should be doing that regardless of whether or not there is a, you know, a, an economic downturn, whether or not there's, you know, a virus, that sort of thing. So you need to take those into play that this is something that you should be looking at all the time. But where are we right now? Well, I'm not much of an artist, as you can probably tell but I can still draw a stick man. So <laughs> I'm going to draw the stick man's anonymous, uh, join the stick man's anonymous club. So anyway, the journey is pretty big. It's got a lot of stuff that we got to go through, but where do we want to get to? We want to get to the digital promised land. Okay. And we've all heard it. We've all seen it. We've all sort of understood, Oh, if only I had this, or if only I could do that in the digital space, then I'd be so much better and everything would be well worth it. Right. The problem guess what? It's not easy. It hasn't been easy. It's not going to be any easier. It wasn't easier. It was a lot harder even, you know, 18 years ago, 18, 17, 16 years ago. It's not going to get any easier, right? I'm not here to tell you it is going to be easy. I'm telling you that it is going to be worth it, right? So we need to look at how do we actually create this journey? How do we get to where we want to go? And when we get to the peak, I mean, a lot of us hear about, you know, getting to the summit and that sort of thing. Guess what? That's only halfway there. You need to go up and you need to go back down. And, and even if you are sort of going down the other side, that doesn't mean that you're you know, less successful. It doesn't mean that you're less productive. What it really means is that you have to continue this journey. It doesn't stop, right? It does not stop when you get to the top. So I'm gonna be outlining the 10 base camps that help you get up there, get to the summit and continue on that journey down the road as well. Because if you're not doing that, then that's going to be the challenge with you and your business. So step number one, sense making. What, what does that actually mean? Sense making is basically using, this is what I talked about your mountain of value, right? It's using your knowledge, using your experience that you already have. You've already done a lot. You've already been able to do a lot. So how do you actually understand what it is that you need? Well, a lot of that comes from experience and there are steps that you need to go through, right? You need to look at, do we go from chaos, which, yeah, you could pretty much say that's a lot of what we're doing right now. It's unimaginable. Is it complex? Is the problem complex being unmanageable? Is it knowable? Meaning that, you know what, this is something that I can manage. And then finally, is it known or fixable? And once you get to those steps, that's where you can actually understand. So, you know, quickly, if you can just put in the chat where you think you might be, uh, chaos, complex, knowable, or no, knowable rather, or known, because defining where you start is going to be very, very important. And again, this comes from us understanding the, the business, but also again, using our experience towards that and how we can actually leverage that. So what level are you at now? Love to see some, some feedback on that. So and if you have a specific area, you know, how do you define each step? And some might be, you know, in this range here, right? Some might be a little bit further. If you're here, that's cool too. It's important to understand that and to reflect upon that to say, look, I know pretty much everything. 
that means that the problem that we're having now, the challenges that we're facing now are fixable, right? Is it fixable? Is it manageable? Is it unmanageable or is it unimaginable? And a lot of us, myself included, like, you know, when COVID came, when the economy started to move in the wrong direction, it's like, is this really happening? And that question that sort of really defines that is, yes, it is happening. I didn't imagine that it was going to happen, but it is happening. And so we really need to get understanding of where are we along this journey, because this sort of helps, again, solve that challenge of what can we do going forward? What steps do we need to take into place as well to, to make sure that we're, we are moving forward? So in terms of the business, right? Like the business side of things, it's so important because if we don't know where we are, we don't know how we're going to be able to continue. But the challenge here is that we've seen a phenomenal amount of growth here, a phenomenal amount of digital adoption and penetration. So e-commerce during lockdown, and this covers the UK and the USA since 2000, obviously for, for quite some time. So it's been tracking that as well in terms of online e-commerce. And this doesn't just mean products. This does mean sales of, of services and that sort of thing. So keep that in mind as well. But we've seen a huge uptick in that, you know, starting at the beginning of the year when COVID started to come in place. Is it going to stick? Possibly. We've already seen some decline in the UK and we're still seeing some growth in the US. I have some Australian stats that I'm going to show you shortly. But the point is, is that if you look at this specific point, this is from a 15% to 35%. Okay. That, that's a huge amount of growth. And we're talking like six months and it's even shorter in another sh chart that I'm going to show you. So that's even shorter. So what if what's happening here really fundamentally is people are realizing buyers are realizing that, Hey, we need to do change our behaviors, how we purchase stuff, how we, you know, get whether again, whether it's products or services, how can we actually do that? It's going digital. The challenge is that if you look at it, you know, overall, if I can just highlight that, where it's about 15 to 20%. And even if you say, well, within the peak, right, of 35%, there's a huge gap. When did the internet start? let's pick, you know, 2000. Okay. 20 years ago. So do you not feel that companies should be much more adopted into digital 20 years later? We're still only at 30% on average 25, you know, 25 to 30%. So if you think about that, and yes, not every business lasts 25 years. So don't get me wrong. There's obviously businesses come and go throughout that. But overall, where is the, why is there this massive, massive gap? This massive, it's a grand Canyon. When you really think about it, how can we actually, if we're a progressive business, how can we, how can we actually, you know, not let that go get to us and say, well, wait a sec, this is a huge opportunity that I'm not able to leverage that I'm not leveraging properly that I'm not able to take advantage of fully. And again, I don't mean just this little blip, I mean, throughout the history of your business, have you sort of adopted digitally, digital into your business, into everything that you've done? And I don't mean just, you know, a website, a contact us page, you know, sorry, if you think that that's digital, then unfortunately you're kind of missing the point. It's not right. You need to look at your whole digital assets, your whole digital ecosystem, all these pieces in, that you're having to produce to create your digital ecosystem, to create your buyer's journey, to create that infrastructure that supports your business. As we've seen, the ones that did have it, they're seeing the growth. In Australia, it's pretty similar. This is for uh, hoping to get some new stats. Um, but at the beginning of the year, we obviously have seen a, a tremendous rise in, in purchasing behavior or changing to digital um, across the, the last, uh, again, this is from March to May. So that's obviously continued because we probably would have seen the drop when, when the country mostly came out and was able to shop again, but then it went up. And again, I'll, I'll find some stats to be able to confirm this, but with the Melbourne lockdown, we've seen that uh, go up uh, as well. So as I said, what's the challenge here? 
20 to 30 percent digital adoption penetration that's it like guess what guys we're down here where do we need to be we need to be up here so how do we get there we need to look at are we leading are we becoming that digital leader and by digital leader i don't mean that you're the guru you're the expert you're the you know, you know absolutely everything about digital. No, absolutely not. You don't need to do that. What you do need to do is understand the steps and the, understand the processes, understand, you know, the, the fundamental foundations that will get you there. And that's what this expedition is about. It's defining those steps. It's understanding what steps do I need to do now? How am I going to actually continue forward with that? So, you know, on a, on a scale of one to 10, where do you feel that you are? Quick question to the audience here. Being a digital leader. The resources are out there. There's people everywhere that can do the specifics. I'm not saying you need to do the specifics. I'm just saying you need, need to understand what specifics that, that need to be done. So you know what needs to be done and you know what doesn't need to be done. So then you're able to understand what's really important here. Do I need that SEO package that somebody's selling me from overseas? Do I need to, you know, um, when I review, review and redo my website, is, am I going to put up another contact us page or am I going to actually create a, a remarkable digital experience? Am I going to experiment with video? Am I going to experiment, experiment with live streaming? How am I going to actually be able to produce that? So on a scale of one to 10, I'd love to hear whoop, one to 10, where do you feel you are in terms of implementation, adoption, penetration, and getting to that goal of being the digital leader? So if you can just throw that in the chat, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to go through that um, shortly. So where is the opportunity? Well, if you look here, it's a little bit small, relatively speaking, because look, the economy is growing, but this little uptick in five years of growth in three months, can you imagine? What if your business could do that? So those businesses that have sort of gotten on the digital bandwagon and, and realized, hey, wait a sec, there's, there's a, a market here for people who want what I have. And yes, obviously some of it has gone up to groceries and fun, you know, basics and essentials and that sort of thing. But in a lot of cases, it's other stuff. It's camping, it's gardening, it's, it's um, entertainment, it, it's you know, house um, improvements, it, it is service. It's how do I actually move forward with what's going on in this business as well. So we, we can see this, this little tick, again, it's comparing, this is offline and the little red is online. So it's huge, what I'm trying to say. Five years growth in three months average, okay? And this is the US, not, I don't have stats for Australia or UK. So if you do run across them, I do love stats. So please uh, send them over and I would really like to, to go over them. But that's really where things are at in terms of what it is and how can we actually move forward. So quickly, I want to show you digital versus real. So you're probably wondering, like, what is the difference between digital and real? And do I really need to, you know, be digital and that sort of thing? Or if I'm trying to create an experience, can't I just have a workshop or can't just I just have a regular, you know, conference live event or that sort of thing? So the young Spanish girl, you know, por que no los dos. And hopefully, um, I can't speak Spanish, oh, not hopefully, but I can't speak Spanish. So hopefully I had a good enough uh, accent there. But por no los dos means why can't you have both, right? I'm not saying that you need to be 100% digital. No, you need to get to about 75 to 80% of digital capabilities. And I'm going to go into how, how that breaks down shortly. But the fact is, is that that allows you to... Um, talk with all different sides of your market, right? That allows you to increase and grow and scale and that sort of thing, which is really important. Okay. And it doesn't matter if you're around the block or around the world, you know, where's your business? For those who are around the block, guess what? What if you could be around the world? I need to improve my drawings. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, but that's earth. Let's, let's just say for all intents and purposes that that's earth. Okay. <laughs> that's the globe. Um, so whether it's around the block, if, whether I'm a coffee shop down the road, how do I actually enhance that digital experience? How do I create that on demand um, ability? How do I create that value that people go? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to buy coffee from them uh, through e-commerce. I'm going to buy a, a coffee making and, and grinding and, 
whatever roasting experience through them as well that I can do from home or I can drop around the corner to that coffee shop or I can do it around the world. If you can access all these people around the world, why wouldn't you? And again, it doesn't really matter if you say, well, I just want to be, you know, around the block shop kind of thing. Again, I just want to serve customers in my area so I can go have a coffee. coffee. What if you could create that digital experience? You could create that, that sustainability in, in the digital space that allows you to do that, allows you to connect with other people um, around the state or around the country, or around the world or that sort of thing. So it really, you know, is very, very important to be able to say, how can I do that? It doesn't matter if I just want to be around the block. I can still access buyers from around the world. And to me, that's the most important part as well. So what we've seen recently is the inflection, or sorry, the economy. And where's it going? Well, guess what? Yeah, we've all seen it. Um, Australia entered its first recession, I think, in like 30 years or something, with two quarters of negative growth. So where's the economy heading? Downwards. And this is pretty typical around the world. You know, it's obviously been exasperated by COVID and all that kind of stuff. But it was kind of teetering in 2019. People were always predicting, hey, the economy is going to stop. It's going to head, head in the wrong direction coming up as well. The fact is, though, is that if you're familiar with math and physics and that sort of thing, there's what, what's called an inflection point. And really, anywhere along this curve, that curve can change. And so you have to ask yourself, do you have that ability, power, and power to change that curve? And absolutely fundamental. You can't change the economy, and I'm not saying you can, but what you can do is you can, you can affect your response to the economy. So whether it's heading down, guess what? If you start to do different things, you can create a different curve. If you start doing different things here, guess what? You can continue on uh, and change the curve as well. And it all comes down fundamentally to what are you doing? Okay, you can change the curve. And why is, the, why is this important? Well, that's where the power comes from. This, this, this basically says, yes, I can't correct, I cannot change the economy, but I can decide when I am going to do something. And that, again, is, is the digital foundation of the, the um, expedition to be able to say, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to change that curve. I'm going to put my path my business path on a different spot. So am I going to move now? Am I going to move a little bit later? Or I'm going to wait and see, right? And those are choices that you have to make. I can't help you with those, but that's really the questions that you need to look at. If the economy is going down, where do I decide that, hey, I'm going to step off and that sort of thing. So you can start today. If you could, let, let's just say, let's suspend all disbelief and let's say, hey, guess what? I'm going to show you a plan that can help you sort of in that step in that stage rather because it becomes a process becomes it because it becomes a framework and more of a methodology would you want to start today would you want to wait for tomorrow would you want to wait for do the sorry the day after tomorrow and just kind of again wait and see and there, there are consequences for doing that but you need to ask yourself when is the best time to plant a tree and everybody, anybody who sort of studied philosophy says it was yesterday <laughs> okay so we need to look at how can we actually do that. And the reason why is we need to understand is how are we going to do that? So are we going to do something strategic, which is reinforcing success, right? Are we going to do something? I'm not sure why. I might try this. I might try a new page. I might try a new sales funnel. I might try, you know, something else, which is okay. I and mean, it's better than doing nothing, but you create that unstable motion as well or am i just going to say ah you know what i'm just going to sit this one out i'm going to wait and see what happens maybe suddenly i'll have you know a bunch of buyers a bunch of uh, my audience becoming purchasers or whatever the case may be so you really kind of need to look when are you going to do that I'm not saying you have to do it today but what are you waiting for when are you going to actually start if you believe that you can actually change the curve you can create your own inflection point. Well, when you when do you want to do that? And that's, again, some of the pieces that I'm going to, to show you. So what's really important is to be able to understand, you know, this is time. Time keeps ticking. Are we going to do something strategic? Are we going to reinforce our success? Are we going to do something that, uh, yeah, we'll try this. We'll see what happens. Where is that going to get us? Or are we going to say, oh, we'll just wait and see. 
So I know it seems pretty logical that, well, I need to do something now. You're absolutely right. But again, what is it that we need to do? How are we going to correct that? How are we going to fix that? How are we going to build that plan going forward? Um, so moving forward, number, base camp number three is signals and strategies, right? Understanding your audience. And a lot of us just take the tack that, well, or the strategy to say, well, I know, kind of know who my audience is. I'm just going to wait and see and go with it. And, you know, but are they really telling you something? You know, what signals are they sending you? And I'm going to talk about strategy coming up shortly. But what are the signals you're being sent? Something very critical to, to understand. And we need to look at, is this something that, you know, are we listening? Are we hearing? Are we looking at the clarity? Are we looking at the noise? Are we looking at, you know, static? And I do use a lot of airplane metaphors because I used to be a, a, a pilot. Um, but are we looking at static versus a slipstream? Static air pressure is kind of that, air pressure that hump, hung, hangs around and causes hangs around the aircraft in flight and causes drag and that sort of thing. Or are we into this, what's called slipstream air, air, uh, airflow, which creates a more dynamic experience. So, but we also need to understand, is our audience wearing noise canceling headphones? And that, that's really critical because a lot of what's going on today is because of, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of concern. So, is anybody listening to you or are they just wearing, you know, the noise canceling he headphones? I'm not going to talk to this person. I don't know what he's going to say. I'm not going to talk to them either. I just want to, you know, live in my own bubble kind of thing. So you need to understand what are the signals? What are people telling you? And if you wouldn't mind, just throw it into the chat box. What some of the signals that you're getting, you know, um, that, for example, people like want to go back to workshops or, or you're able, you know, have you produced a course online? Have you created sort of more of the zoom uh, meetings and that sort of thing and more of the sharing and networking or that sort of thing. So, so sometimes you really need to listen to what's being said by your audience. And sometimes you just need to ask, you know, what, 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 how can I help you differently? How can I help you better? I know that we're going through a lot of different things. What's really important uh, for you and how can I actually, uh, do something about that. So what are the signals you're being sent? So please, if you can, just quickly throw in a few, one or two in the chat box. And um, what's your audience telling you? Because if we don't understand that, we can't really move forward because we can't create that plan going forward as well. So one of the ways that signals don't work is if you look at sort of those gaps in the signals as well. Um, and by gaps, what I, it's what I call the missing bullet strategies, right? So these are things that you don't see, things that people don't tell you, things that may not be obvious, but guess what? They're there. And I'm going to draw some engines here just so that this makes sense. Back in World War II, they had, um, uh, obviously they're flying from, from England to Europe to, to fight the battles over Europe, right? And what they decided to do was they wanted to see how can we actually improve the return rate of aircraft because, you know, aircraft and, and airmen and women and that sort of thing were going over there. Unfortunately, they're getting shot down. Aircraft wasn't coming back. So how can we actually improve that aircraft? How can we make sure that we bring more people home? So what they did is they had this, it's, it's a, I mean, not the face, it's a really good study. What they did is once the airplanes came back, they went through and they um, uh, marked all the bullets, right? all the bullet marks. And maybe a few there. So they counted up the bullets. And they said, well, guess what, guys, Aer aerospace engineers, um, we need to put how do you protect from bullets? Well, you put armor. So we need to put bullets, armor protection here, we need to put some here, we need to put some armor there, we need to put some armor here, and here and here and maybe out here and out here as well. Cool plan, right? Let's protect the aircraft from bullets. And if, you, if you've heard this story before, you're, you're going, hey, Doyle, wait a sec, wait a sec. You're absolutely right, right? What, what's missing here? What, <laughs> what is not being said is that the aircraft that were not coming back were the ones that had bullet holes in the cockpit areas, ones that had bullet holes in the fuselage, one that had bullet holes in the engine guess what? They couldn't actually measure that because those aircraft didn't return. They crashed, you know, tragically, you know, the, they were got lost in Europe or wherever the case may be, taken prisoners of war. The fact is, is that they did not, they realized later to say, well, wait a sec, we need armor in those spots, right? We need 
ar armor to protect the cockpit, to protect the engines, to protect the tail, to protect the fuselage and the, uh, and the fuel tanks. Because if we don't, that plane's not coming back. So again, we need to look at what is the missing bullets? What, are, what is our customer not telling us? yet they're actually doing. So let, let's say they are going to the local hardware store, but that's because they have no choice. What if it was because, you know, if you could give them that choice, if you could provide them with some direction or tools or whatever the case may be. In the case of a service-based business, you know, what are they not telling you? Maybe they do want to connect with you. Maybe they're able to connect with you on Zoom, but they're not telling you that because everybody is saying, oh, I don't want to do another Zoom. But have you actually explored that? If a customer wants to talk with you, how are you enabling that? So quickly, you know, what are some of your missing bullet strategies and insights that you have? Would love to hear a couple, um, you know, things that it's not necessarily obvious, but when you look back at it, it, it darn well is very obvious that I need this. But again, not everything can be articulated by your audience, by your customers, by your buyers. So what is it that you want to do? You kind of have to weed through that data and look and see and, and that sort of thing. And that, that's the other thing too, is that you can see this through some of the analytics data, some of your Facebook data, some of your usage data, that sort of thing that really kind of shows you that. So what I'm saying is don't take just a superficial look. Oh, let's just, you know, put armor plating on the parts that, um, we see we need to really kind of take a, a dive down and to see what it is actually causing, what is actually happening, how can we actually um, uh, move forward from that as well. So that's really important. Base camp, base camp number four, that's looking at digital transformation itself, okay? And how's everybody doing? If you have any questions, please, um, let's see, I can't, I can't uh, do that. Um, yeah, I don't have multiple screens, so um, it's hard to actually see any questions or comments or that sort of thing. So I'll hold those to the end. I'll, I'll just keep going. But um, yeah, so digital transformation is where are you currently? Where are you going? And a lot of it, the way that I see transformation is what I call the airport terminal. And this is what, what's known as the liminal space. We are here. We need to be here. And a lot of us are focused in on that transactional space that's here meaning that it's simply, okay, can I get another buyer for the same product, right? We need to look at, can I deliver that transformationally? Can I deliver a digital experience that is remarkable, that's personalized, that's worth remembering? And if I can get them to that step, I've moved from transactional to transformational. I've been able to provide an ongoing service for my customer, for my buyers, for my audience. And that's what we need to look at this liminal space that's right here. That's basically, you know, back in the day when we can fly between countries or across the country or whatever the case may be, you sit at the airport and you know, you're going somewhere. All right. You know that this is something that you can do and it's somewhere that you're going to do. So it's, it's kind of like an experience to say, Hey, this is I came from my house. I'm at the airport. I'm waiting to go on my transformation. And that's what we need to think about here is how can we actually do that in this digital space? It's the same process but we need to understand how are we evolving and transforming our business, which is critical. The thing that's we need to understand, it's going to take some time. The other thing we need to understand is that we do have to do this as an approach. Again, we can't do everything at once. So how do we break it down? How do we decide what's really important? How do we understand what's going to move forward? We have to add some time, but we need to look at our tactics, our strategy, our vision, our evolution. And if you look at it that way, each of those moves us along this path forward over time as well. So we need to be able to understand how that goes together. So if you can, you know, what are some of your tactics that you're using? And tactics are day-to-day -day stuff. I'm going to post three times on social media day for my event coming up next week, or I'm going to be able to do something like that, right? Tactics are, are stuff you need to do now. It's not later. That's, that's more of a strategy. That's an understanding of how do these pieces fit together. But tactics are, what do I need to do now today to get to that next step? It might be setting up a better uh, contact management system, or it might be setting up a better sales page or something like that. So don't get me wrong. If you feel that you need to do that, go do that now. But we also need to look at strategy. We need to look at the longer term as well. We need to look then at the vision and we need to look at what comes after that, right? Okay, so we're moving forward. How are we going to move forward, you know, collectively as a business to be able to, to understand how to do that? So if you can, 
quickly type down your tactics, the strategy, a vision, and evolution. Where are you headed? And everything about a digital expedition is understanding we've got to reach that summit, right? We've got to bring our team there, ourselves, whoever's involved, up to the summit and then down the other side as well so that we continue to grow the business and we move on to our, our, our next expedition or whatever it is that we need to be doing uh, moving forward as well. So that brings us to base camp number five. And this is really sort of an environmental scan to say, hey, this is what's important here. This is what we can work with. This is what we need to understand. Um, and what I've done is I've broken it down into what I call three zones. And these are progressive zones to be able to understand. And the first one is what I call the uh, zone one is the fear. Zone two is learning. And zone three is growth. And I'll go into a little bit more detail as we get into it. But fear is... Again, you have to be very, very tactical. You have to understand that this is the problem that I need to solve today for my customer. It's not something that needs to be done six months down the road, nine months, even maybe next week, perhaps. So it's really important to understand that this is kind of, and I call it fear because that's what it is. It's like, well, what do I need to do to be able to do that? And we kind of get stuck there. Zone number two is learning. It's like, okay, I need to be able to understand what's important. I need to be able to know what I don't know. Remember that sense-making graph um, that I showed you the, at the beginning? That's critical. That's your learning process. That's the understanding that I, I can progress. I don't know everything, but you know what? It's my job to be able to get to know everything. So I'm going to work on that. And then that progresses into growth. Then I've got, I can take a breath. <sighs> right? A breath of relief. I've gotten past fear. I've gotten into learning. I know what I need to do now. I know what I need to do tomorrow. Growth is what can I do going forward as well? And if we go into the, some of the depth here, um, we look at the state, right? What is the state of mind? What is the state of presence? What is the state of your business? And that sort of thing. And a lot of it comes down to understanding the chaos, understanding that I can do this better and creating that certainty as well, that certainty that says that, hey, guess what? It's not that bad. I, it, is, it is bad. It may not be as good as it was before, but guess what? I, I know with certainty that I can move us out of this space. The next one is knowledge map. And this is understanding, and this can be used both for yourself and your audience, for your business and this journey that I'm going to show you how to create uh, coming up as well. But we need to take them through how to. And this again is something that you can go through as well. How to do something, that's very tactical. It's very matter of fact, it's not, I need to do this now. I need to put in a new sales page. I need to put in a, a better contact system. I need to add additional emails or whatever to my overall system. So it's very, very important that we're able to do that and we're able to do that quickly. Then we can move into, um, let's just go with a different color here. Uh, should I? So. Should I means stuff that I can do, I should do, right? But I need to sort of outline that. I need to put those pieces in place. Otherwise, I'm not going to know what I, what I could do, which leads us to the next step. Could I, right? Could I create a Cirque du Soleil experience or a Disney slash Netflix experience online with my business? Absolutely. And that's why it's important to be able to say, I need to do stuff now. I need to look at how can I do stuff coming up? Should I do this? And then could I? That's a little bit longer term. In terms of symptoms, right? This is what we're seeing sort of affecting us as a business. So symptoms, initially it's marketing fears. It's like, oh my goodness, is my market even there? What are they doing? How are they doing it? That, that's where we need to look at, you know, the signals and the strategy and the missing bullets and that sort of thing. I can then test some of those things to say, well, look, I, I really, I may not know everything, but I'm going to test it to see, I'm going to challenge my assumptions. I'm going to see what can I actually do. And then finally confirmation. It's like, yeah, oh yeah, that worked. That worked well. Um, whether it's, you know, the way that you utilize social media, whether it's the way that you, you know, reconfigure your, your website or your customer buyer's journey, all those pieces, that's the confirmation that you'd be able to need to move forward uh, as well. Next, we move on to tools. What do you actually need to be able to progress forward? Okay. Do you need a ladder or a life raft? I'll go into that shortly. Um, do you need a roadmap? And then finally, the big step, if you, I asked this question before, you know, how do you cross the Grand Canyon? How do you cross the Grand Canyon? It's not with a roadmap. I mean, you can cross it with a roadmap, but what's the best way to cross it? 
it's with a flight across and over the the uh, Grand Canyon. So can we move into three dimensions to be able to say this is really important? This is what we need to be able to do moving forward um, as well, because if we don't have a flight plan, we're just like every other business. We need to think more strategically in three dimensions as well. And with strategic thinking, we need to look at the shift. I talked about that. Um, we need to talk about the foundation and then we need to talk about foresight. So this is saying that yes, strategy is important. It's not quite as important as, you know, the state and the knowledge and the symptoms and the tools, because we need to get through that first, but this is, this is how we can move forward as well. And then moving into outcomes uh, from there. So from outcomes, we're looking at so what signals are we receiving? What enablers are we getting? And then what assets do we actually need to be able to produce as well? So, you know, in terms of your journey, journey, like, let me know where you are. Are you zone one? Are you zone two? Are you zone three? If you wouldn't mind just throwing that in the chat, that would be fantastic. So do we need a life raft? Where are we here? Well, we're going up here. There's this big chasm. We need to get over that, right? So that's part of our journey is to say, do we need a ladder or do we need a life raft to float over? That's a life raft. <laughs> or can we use an airplane? There we go. There's an airplane. <laughs> if anybody knows of any good drawing schools, please send me a link. <laughs> all right. So what does this all look like? Well, this is, in fact, the digital expedition, right? We're going up the summit. We're coming back down. We're continuing the journey. It doesn't stop. We don't get there and go, hey, I'm done. Yahoo, yippee. No, part of it is getting back to where you are, back to being able to produce a continuous growth, a continuous ability to, to sustain your business as well. So it doesn't end getting to the top is what I'm trying to say. And the surprising thing, what does it look like? It looks like a big barrier. It looks like a big triangle as we get up to it as well. So base camp number six, this is the digital expedition itself. How do you get, how do you prepare to get to clarity, certainty, and competency? And if we can, a lot of us, what we're going through right now looks like this. Fundamentally, it, it looks like a mess of, of wire, of cable, of, uh, of hose, or that sort of thing. So what we need to do, we need to unwind this. We need to pull it apart. We need to unwind it from that, that chaos. And that's what I call the black wire. But if you ever try to... You know, you can lay out your hose, water your garden or your lawn, and what happens when you just pull it out, right? It just gets kinked up. It doesn't follow a line. It doesn't stay straight. And, and if you ever wondered about that, because sometimes I have really deep thoughts, it's because we're transitioning a two-dimensional line to a three-dimensional line, okay? We're actually going up in that direction. So when you think about it, the line is that, that cable, it's that hose, it's that wire that pulls everything together. That's what we need. We need this piece, but it's not working. It's getting tangled. And that's because we haven't looked at how do we actually move it upwards. If you move that wire into three dimensions, if you move that hose into three dimensions, you have to kind of give it a little flick, right? Flick your hose, flick your electrical cable so that it comes into uh, sync with that. And if you're not doing that, if you're not thinking in that third direction, third dimension it's it's just a tangled mess so we need to cross the grand canyon we need to pull this wire across we need to be able to understand that in order to do that we have to create this digital expedition but we're going to get from our point of clarity to our point of certainty to our point of competency and i'm going to get into these in just a second so so the question is is this a and i get a, this question a lot but is it a safari is it an expedition and that sort of thing it's a journey right and if we want to get to the digital promised land where we understand what's going on, we know what steps we need to take. Again, this is your digital leadership. We can get, build our team to be able to do this. We can get our resources aligned and that sort of thing. It is a discovery. The main difference between a safari and an expedition, safari is just an observation. It's like, hey, let's go watch the lions. Let's go you know, look at the tigers or the drafts or whatever the case may be. Let's get in our Range Rover and away we go. Um, into Africa, which is fun. You know, don't get me wrong. A safari could be fun, but is that really where you want to go with your business? Is that really where you want to grow with your business as well? Or is it an expedition? It's a discovery. We're going to be able to do this. We're going to test this out. We're going to run some experiments. We're going to see what works and what doesn't. We're going to see 
what our business is like. We're going to create that journey for ourselves and for our audience and our uh, customers as well. So keep that in mind that this is a barrier to us getting there. And, but we have to kind of step up and we can't say that this is just a safari. Um, I'll go sit in the back and I'll take pictures with my camera, right? You need to be able to plan this. You need to be able to produce it. You need to be able to output this as well. So it's something that needs to be done. Um, otherwise, there's somebody else driving. There's somebody else. He might go where you want, don't want to go or where you want to go, but, or you just, it's just, Hey, let's be an opportunist. Let's see what he's going to show us. And then we'll make a decision. It doesn't work anymore, right? We need to go up. We need to go through fear, learning and growth to be able to get there. We need to be able to understand all these different pieces so that they're working together. And that's what this is, right? The point of clarity, point of certainty, point of competency. Point of clarity is, are we clear what we want to be able to do? Because if we're not, guess what? You wouldn't start an expedition if you're not clear where you're going, what you're doing there, how are you going to get there, what team do you need, what tools, what resources, that sort of thing. So until we have clarity of where it is, where is this summit, right? What's going to happen when we get there? What am I going to do after? How am I going to get there? There's so many questions, but that's important to be able to understand where is it that we need to start first? And I'm going to show you that coming up very, very quickly. Um, point of certainty. I know that I need to get to the summit. I know that this is my summit. I know that the summit is part of that journey as well. It's not just a one-off go up and we're done. No, guess what? We need to look at this much more realistically. And then point of competency. Do I know everything possible? Do I know what I don't, didn't know before? And again, you may not know everything and that's totally fine. But again, part of sense making is understanding what competencies I need going forward. So yes, I made it to the summit. I made it to base camp nine, whatever you call that. And I've made it to um, base camp 10. Am I smarter for it? Do I know more? And the answer should be yes. Because if you're not learning anything, you're not really doing anything progressive. You're, you're just kind of sustaining yourself, which is not, you know, uh, again, you can build a business based on that, but where do you want to go from here? Do you want to make it interesting? Do you want to be able to push through the barriers? Do you want to kind of mount that summit as well? So it's very important. If we can understand these three points, clarity, certainty, and competency, we're halfway there because we can outline those again and get those done um, uh, properly in first time. So what I, this is what I call the digital amps approach. So the audience method process and story. So these are the four elements, the four methods that you need to be able to put together to say, this is how I can build my digital expedition, right? These are the building blocks that you need to be able to do that. So audience, right? That's how are you connecting and communicating? And there's, there is a lot of detail here and a lot of depth. And unfortunately, I don't have time to go through all of it. But I'll give you a summary and we're going to talk hopefully a little bit more about the process because that's where we can really kick things off. But the audience is your audience. What do you want to do with them? Be seen, be heard, be understood. We need to look at our method. All right. So this is the internal structure that you need to connect with everything. And how do you do that? With digital keystone foundation. How do you do that? With digital ecosystem. How do you do that? with your digital assets. You need all these pieces in place to be able to build that method. And again, sometimes you probably have a lot of this already in place, might just need a little bit of tweaking, might just need a little bit of understanding, but that those pieces are fundamentally there. It's just a matter of how do we pull them out? How do we extract those as well? Um, in terms of a story, we have to look at how, what is this journey that we're taking people on? Actually, I should go to process first because that's AMPS. Uh, process really this is the starting point for a lot of businesses and this is where the businesses that are doing things well are doing things very well because this they've understood understood that digital process right what steps are critical to succeed and if you don't have these digital is going to be even harder than it is already so how do we do that we look at value creation can we surprise and delight can we create a digital experience, a personalized audience experience? It's remarkable. People know what it is that you're trying to convey. It's, it's again, it may not replace 100% what a, a traditional digital, uh, sorry, traditional live experience is, but guess what? Do you want to want, want to work around the block or around the world? Do you want to be able to connect with other people from everywhere, other customers and that sort of thing? And digital delivery as well. 
can you look at how do I do this on demand? How do I understand what needs to be done? And by on demand, I mean that if you're able to produce something, how do you deliver it technically and sorry, literally and figuratively as well? And I'm going to get into some cool examples that people are doing that. Uh, finally, story. How, what is the journey that we're taking on? We're taking our audience on rather. Is it adaptable? Is it connected? Is it resourceful? So what I want you to do is can you go through these different steps for all um, four of these and just quickly write them in? You know, which one rank those? Which one do I need to work on? Which one can I work on? Which one, you know, do I have a good handle on? And try to add as much detail as you can as well. Go through the audience. Go through the method. Go through the process. And again, I'm going to expand on this slightly. Uh, and then go through the story and rank all of those individually. And what you'll have at the end is you'll have 12 specific items that you can actually work on. And these form your your flight plan. These are the activities that you need to be able to do. So we're going to take your list. We're going to transfer that into uh, the next step as well. Any questions? Where do you feel that you are right now? Which one is most important for you, for your business? If you wouldn't mind, take a moment, quickly throw that in the, the chat box. Do I need to work on audience? Do I need to work on method? Do I need to work more on process? Do I need to work on story? Fundamentally, these, these are sort of designed to be able to work in, in, in order as well, because we're moving from the fear, learning and growth, and we're progressing as well. These are, this process is very important because again, that gives us the ability to communicate directly, to understand, to build up our digital assets so that we're ready. We're ready to go on this journey. Can we create a story before we have sort of all the tools and tactics and strategies in place? Possibly, but we might have to go back and refine that. Can we continue to build our audience? If we don't necessarily have a process, yes, we can. But what if you could do that in unison as well? And again, then finally method. What if we had, can we start with a method? Yes, you have one. I've said this many, many times before. You have a method, you have an audience, you have a story, you have a process. We need to really help zero in on that and define those uh, coming forward as, way, uh, as well. So this is really the third wave of a business. So this is what I call Hello Fresh meets Jamie Oliver meets Uber Eats. And I'll get into this one shortly as well. Cirque du Soleil versus Dis Disney. Um, a lot of businesses that are making this transition, this, this transformation are understanding that I need to step out. I need to be able to leverage digital properly through what I've said, value creation, digital experience, and digital delivery. In the, and what some businesses are doing that's very, very remarkable is, again, Hello Fresh meets Jamie Oliver meets Uber Eats. What does that mean? Well, that means that we're able to produce product. We're able to produce goods, again, goods or services that allow people to purchase, that allow people to understand what it is that we need. And then I'm able to explore that with something like, you know, celebrity chef cooking or that sort of thing. And then I'm able to deliver that with Uber Eats, which means on demand. Okay. So for example, if just to put the model in play as well, hello fresh, you can order the food. It comes for the week. You're able then to make dishes and that sort of thing. What if, and again, think of how you can apply this to your business. What if you could have, you know, Jamie Oliver talk about that. And maybe you are Jamie Oliver as well. Maybe not in the cooking department. Like I'm not but maybe you are Jamie Oliver in your expertise of level of business and that sort of thing. Who are you and what are you able to provide to them that creates that experience? And then how do you deliver that Uber Eats? What does Uber Eats do or Deliveroo or whatever you want to call it? There's so many out there, food delivery services. It means I can order instantaneously, instantaneously, I can get my order quickly and, and away I go and that sort of thing. So it's very, very quick. It's very, very fast to be able to do that. So, can I produce product or service? HelloFresh. Can I explain that? Can I explore that? Can I create that experience as Jamie Oliver? And can I deliver that on demand? And if you look at it, even from an e-commerce perspective of, of businesses, they can do this right now. And a lot of businesses are really missing the point here. It's, can I get digital on demand delivery? Absolutely. Right. There's apps in place that I can set up a website with, um, uh, again, an Uber like Uber type app where it comes and picks up and deliver de delivers to you almost, you know, within a couple of hours or that sort of thing. I can compete with the big Amazons. I can compete with the Bunnings and the Walmarts and, you know, all businesses across the world because they have a click and collect. They have, you know, Uber delivery. I can compete with Amazon. Amazon has prime. Guess what? You can add that to your website uh, to be able to deliver again, in this case, physical products. Um, but in service-based products, you can deliver your product instantaneously as well, which is even easier. 
So how do I combine that? I'm creating an experience, I'm creating value, and I'm able to deliver that right away. One of the sad stories, and I'm not sure the outcome of this yet, is Cirque du Soleil. Um, they went into receivership, I think it was like May or June or something like that. But when you think about it, like they have an immense library of um, spectacle, right? Their shows and their performances from around the world. And, you know, uh, living in Montreal, like you can go watch them on the pier. And every time new shows come out and tickets come out, like there's big lines, right? They are oversubscribed. So what went wrong? Why would they go into bankruptcy? And yes, there's obviously some issues or some talk about, well, the business owner wanted to get um, exit or whatever the case may be. But the point is, if you think about it, they have a tremendous amount of value that they're, all, they're just sitting on. They have these shows, they have these performances, they have everything. What are they doing with those? How are they creating that spectacle? How are they understanding what really needs to be done? And if they're, they're not, which they're not, guess what? Their business can fail. And in this case, it has. So what do you need to do? You need to create that experience. And yes, if you've been to Cirque du Soleil show, the live in concert show, like they are phenomenal. You can't replace that. And again, I'm not saying that you need to, but what you can do in place of that is something that Disney did. And if you're you know, familiar with Hamilton, which is a, a Broadway play in New York, and I think they're expanding it around the world, um, more and more and more people want to go see this. So what did Disney do? They kept the stage the same. They kept the people, the actors the same. They went in with a film crew and they filmed the entire performance. And then they added that to their Disney um, uh, streaming channel. So if you can imagine that, like Disney is, it gets it. Cirque du Soleil, not so much. If you're sitting on all this mountain of value, the, these, again, thousands and thousands of performances, you could be able to create that value by um, having an on-demand uh, streaming service, having, you know, um, additional products that you can purchase, e-commerce, and that sort of thing. So look at it that way. Like, how do you become the Disney of your industry? How do you not become the Cirque du Soleil? Or how do you leverage what you have? How do you leverage that? Well, guess what? Again, it comes down to digital experience, it comes down to value creation, and how can you deliver that product uh, instantaneously as well, or not instantaneously, but within a short period of time as well. So if you can quickly, what do you create? How do you create alignment with, this three, with these three for you? What's most important for you? What do you need to work on? Is it value creation? Is it the experience? Is it the delivery methods as well? So if you wouldn't mind, if you got a few extra seconds, um, quickly throw that in the chat box as well. So your flight plan, this is sort of where the crux comes together, right? Where everything needs to look at, what you need to do, how can you fit, the, fit these together? Um, because right now, a lot of us are just traveling we get in the car and we go. And, and I'm not saying you need necessarily a map or a flight plan for everything, but if you're going on a big journey, you do. Okay. If you're going, you know, somewhere forward that you may not have been before, guess what? You do need that stability. You do need that understanding to say, Hey, these are the pieces that this is where I'm going to stop. This is what I'm going to do. And guess what? Yes, it's rough, but at least you have one. If you know, talking about a flight and, and that sort of thing, like you don't leave the airport, you don't start the engine. You know, you need to go back a few hours and you need to create a flight plan. And it doesn't matter if you're just going for a little quick little orbit around the city or the country or whatever the case may be in your own little Cessna 172 or whatever. The point is, they don't let you in the air unless you've got that. So there is some, you know, some fundamental foundations here that, that you need to look at is, am I prepared for this journey? The reason why, well, guess what? If a plane goes off course, they can, and doesn't return when they're supposed to, they can send out a search party. It's like you said, you're going here, 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 all these points along the route. So we're able to be able to understand where you are, where you're going, and then you can make it a checkpoint to say, this is what's really important here. So what I'd like you to do, we don't have time now, but that's okay, is to take these elements, right? Remember I told you to rank them. So rank them one, two, three and do that for all of the segments as well. So one, two, three, all three here, 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 three here. And then we need to lay those out into the business plan or the flight plan rather. So take those three, the first three, the most priority, the highest priority. Again, I feel that these are the most, the highest priority because this sort of helps you build your foundation and then you can continue forward as well from there. So put those three in there, your building blocks. What actions are you going to take? 
moving up the scale, what are your building blocks? What are you going to do as well? Lay, lay those out here. And then the third one, uh, what building blocks do you have? What actions, how are you going to prioritize them? Final building blocks and actions and the priorities as well. And these are your base camps. These can be your base camps, right? These can be the point where you say, oh, I'm going to take a break and just not a, you know, not a six months hiatus, but I'm going to take, you know, a quick little break to be able to move forward. So base camp one, base camp two, base camp three, base camp four, and have as many as you feel you need, right? I can't define that for you, but this gives you some structure. If you can do it again, based upon the four triangles, the four power triangles, that's something that you can learn from. That's something that you can start with today. Simplify, don't make it too complicated. So take the four, the three rather from each of the four triangles, put them in place, prioritize them. Guess what? You've got a plan here. You've got a flight plan. You've got an understanding of the pieces that you need. So again, as I said earlier, you don't need to do everything at once. You can't do everything at once. It's impossible. So break it down, decide what's important, which of these triangles is most important to you. And then how can you move forward? You put them into the step, step by step order. Easy peasy, right? Action for today is prioritize each of the 12 power triangles elements for you, place them order, place them in order on the flight plan building blocks with an action to get started. And guess what? You can also add an estimated date to finish by as well, which would be those dates there. Pretty easy? No, <laughs> it's still gonna take a lot of work, right? It's not gonna be easy, but guess what? The hardest part is getting going is starting. So start there, again, outline which is what's most important. How do you move forward from there? All right, so base camp number nine, timing and targeting your digital expedition. And in this case, I say vectors are everything, right? They are, vectors meaning you're going in a direction. And I talked about that briefly as well. When are you gonna start? Are you gonna start now? Are you going to start later or are you just going to wait and see what happens? And look, I, I know a lot of you who are on the webinar and thank you everybody for joining in. You need to start now. You need to start today. When was the best time to plant a tree? Yesterday. So back a day. Can you go back there? Yes, you can. You need to get started. You need to be able to understand what's important. You need to be able to reinforce that success. Okay. If you're doing the, yeah, let's try it and see, I might try this, I might try that. Yeah, you might feel you're making some progress, but overall you're pretty much staying in the same direction or do you just wait and continue down that uh, curve as well. The interesting thing is that how big and quickly does the problem become? And as, as, again, as the pilot, you'd, you'd see this, like you've got some barriers at the end of the runway. There's your runway and you've got trees, at the, not necessarily at the end of the runway, they usually clear a path um, behind that, but you've got these barriers, okay? And you have to clear those barriers before you hit them. <laughs> and some people unfortunately have hit the barriers um, on takeoff, which isn't very good. But the point is, is that they, they're clear. They say you have barriers, you know, 400 meters at the end of the runway or whatever the case may be. But if you're in your little plane, your little plane here. Again, drawing skills need to improve. But as you get further down the runway, guess what? That barrier looks bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's because it is bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So you need to look at how long are you going down this runway for? And guess what? The barrier becomes bigger the longer you wait. So that's actually what we're seeing here is we're seeing the barrier get bigger and bigger and bigger until Guess what? As I said, not every plane can, can um, uh, climb past those barriers as well. So it, it needs to be done. It needs to be looked at. Uh, and you need to define that to say, this is what I'm going to do. This is the action that I'm going to be taking going forward. Otherwise, that obstacle becomes bigger. It's not going anywhere. We can't just ignore it. We need to understand what it is that we're doing here um, as well. What I, oh, that's part two. Yeah, so timing and targeting your digital expedition. So one degree, what does one degree look like? Right, if you're defining it in a circle, it's one degree of 360. Okay, so it's one degree of 360. So it's quite small. But can you measure that? And what does it actually mean? Yes, absolutely, you can measure it. 
there's a rule of thumb in, in flying that for every uh, 60 kilometers forward, they use nautical miles, but I'll use kilometers. Um, for every 60 kilometers forward, uh, if you're one degree off, how far are you off? You become one kilometer. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So if I'm going forward, traveling forward, I go 60K forward. If I'm one degree off my target, I'm going to be one kilometer away, which for something 60 kilometers, if you're flying a plane, you can look down and go, oh yeah, that's one kilometer over there. There's the runway over there. You can easily correct, like it's not that bad. But let's say you're traveling from one of the most isolated cities in the world, Perth. <laughs> and if you're flying to Sydney or Melbourne, which is closed, you can't actually do that. But if you could, I think that's like 3,000 kilometers, something like that. Maybe not quite that big, 2,500. Anyway, the point is, is that I'm not gonna land in Sydney. I'm not even gonna be able to see Sydney if I'm still heading in that wrong direction. And again, it's finite, it's small. Like one degree is not a lot, but over time, over distance, it becomes huge. And that's why I say vectors are everything. If you miss that one degree, if you say this doesn't matter, guess what? You're not going to go on to target. And that's why we look at the actual flight plan as well. We do have these steps because that allows us to say, are we going in the right direction? Do we need to correct? Do we need to adjust? How can I actually make this work? So that's super, super important to be able to do that, to look at that in terms of, am I off track or am I going on course as well? So base camp number 10, this is your digital challenge, right? And I'm gonna be wrapping up pretty quickly. So your digital challenge, what are the steps that I need to be able to take to get across to this digital promised land? Or as I like to say, with my torch or flashlight, <laughs> shining the light on the digital darkness, okay? Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you a lot better. <laughs> anyway, that's what you want to do, is be able to do that. So where are you right now? You really need to look at that, okay? You can't start up a mountain. You can't start continuing that journey unless you know right where you are right now. And I mean, are you strategically prepared? Are you tactically prepared? Do you have the tools? Do you have the team? Do you have the understanding? Do you have the map? Do you have the flight plan? You know, do you have all those pieces as well? Ask yourself, where are you going? And how will I get there? Again, this is a journey for the long term. You can do short stops along the way. That's not the point. If I want to get somewhere far, so if I want to continue my business, you know, next year or the year after that, or even the next six months, I need to be able to know how to do that. What teams, tools, and tactics do you need? And then continuing on forward, what are you going to test? And this is where you can actually run some digital experiments. And don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to experiment. But again, you have to learn something from the experiment. rather. If you don't, there's no point in doing it. So, so try some different tools. Try some different tactics. Understand, you know, as, as we talked about in the, in the, the fear, whoops, in the fear learning growth triangle, or that giant um, space diagram, we can look at, right? Where are we? What do the pieces that we need? Let, let's try something. Let's try and see what happens. Does it work? Great. If not, what do you know, if we learn, learn from it, or if it did not work, what did we learn from it as well? So we need to be able to be clear about that. Can we get through the fear, learning and growth as well? What are we going to test? What signals is my customer telling me? What signals are they not telling me, right? The missing bullet strategy. How do we actually pull that into place? And then look, define it. How will you measure success? And then the most important one, I'm going to double highlight this, is what are the base camps of your business? So I've showed you, shown you what you can typically do. And again, not every business is built the same. So there, are, there is going to be some variation. But what journey are you taking your audience on? What journey are you taking your customer on? And that's the key ingredient here, because if you don't have those pieces in place, guess what? It's just randomness to them. It's just chaos to them. It's, they don't see any uh, understanding. They don't see a foundation. They don't see you as a solid block, a solid foundation that they can come to rely on as well. So 
what are the base camps of your business? I've outlined 10 here. You don't necessarily need 10, but you can outline exactly how do I get from clarity, competency, certainty rather, to competency, competency as well. All right, so we made it. Whew. <laughs> Quite the expedition, ran a little bit longer than I wanted to, but hopefully everybody's um, hanging in there. Um, lots to learn, lots to understand as well. But this is where we get to, you are now the new digital CEO. And by CEO, I'm calling it the chief expedition officer, right? We need to really step up that leadership. We need to step up that understanding. Digital is not going away. It needs to be embraced. It needs to be engaged. It needs to be leveraged. We need to get all of our businesses up to, you know, 50, 60, 70% of being digital transformed. And if we're not making it there, then guess what? You're going to be missing out. So you are now the digital CEO and you need to create that expedition that's going to get you there as well. So one of the things that we talked about is where are you right now? And this is where I've got some gifts uh, as well that uh, I'll be handing out uh, down the road as well. So if you go to leadership.digital, you can actually take an assessment to say, this is where I am right now with strategy, with content, with social, with campaigns, with advertising, with my website, with the seven criteria that I cover in the book Breakthrough. And if you do go to leadership.digital, finish that assessment. Um, I'll send you a free copy of the book, paperback. If you want a PDF, I'll send you a PDF as well, but uh, you'd be entitled to the paperback copy, as well as a printed digital expedition worksheet, the one that I've just gone through. Um, so that's there as well. So if it's helpful, please like and share. Um, hopefully you've had some, some aha moments. So hopefully I've been able to sort of fill that gap in terms of what you need going forward in the digital space to build this digital expedition for your business. It's so important. You need to be able to have it. If you're in replay, please leave a comment. If you need to have any questions, please give me an email at uh, doyle.dep.digital. Some of the resources and worksheets, um, take a look at this. There's the uh, worksheets that there, there's some additional videos, some other resources as well at bit.ly slash digital expedition resources as well that you can go and get those there. So, all right. Fantastic. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, lots of questions, uh, some comments and that sort of thing. So really appreciate um, Karsten, Andrea, um, who else? Jeff, thank you. Mark, who else? Bronwyn, Sheldon, a whole bunch of them. I'll have to go through the questions. I might just hang around. If you need to check off, that's totally cool. I'll try to go through the questions. But um, uh, just in closing, really want to thank you. Really appreciate your time. Uh, happy to help, here to help you build that digital expedition if that's what you need. But like I said, go to um, uh, leadership.digital to start that assessment and I'll send you a copy of the book or the worksheet. 